Okay, so I just wanted to share with you a little bit on um, our thresholds work. So when I started five years ago, you all challenged me six years ago now, um, saying, hey, you know, we'd really like to know what a scorecard might be or thresholds, particularly for natural enemies. Um, the idea was that folks had organic blocks that they've been working with for years and they would see that when they had a decent number of natural enemies, they seemed to be able to let things ride at the end of the season. Um, they felt like their, their control was oftentimes pretty good, but they wanted to know, you know, what, what, what is enough? When, when do I actually have enough natural enemies that um, I don't need to keep spraying? Um, and so this has been a, a little bit of a, a long road, but I think we're making some progress. And so I want to share where we're at on um, this threshold question. So this has been a, a project in collaboration um, with myself, Chris Strom, Rick Hilton, Robert Orpet, Louis Nottingham, and then all of the, the growers and field staff that have really helped us with this project. So this idea of thresholds is um, not a new one. And I wanted to just share briefly a couple of Scylla thresholds that were developed years ago. So we can compare what we're coming up with now to uh, some of those. So Everett Burtz in the late eighties looked at that relationship between Scylla nymphs and when he was seeing any fruit russet. And what you're looking at there is a regression where, you know, the more nymphs you have per leaf, the more damage he's getting, a little bit different in, in Anjos and Bartlett's. But overall, he was seeing um, that with, to get any detectable russet, he was getting about 0.3 nymphs per leaf. Pretty similarly with Westergaard um, in the, um, also in the 80s, he was seeing that to get 5% um, downgrades, so he was looking at any downgrading, so both his coals and um, his um, just downgraded fruit, he was getting 0.4 nymphs per leaf for Anjo and um, up to two for Bosk. So these are numbers that, you know, we're helping them know, okay, at what point am I getting some um, damage? So, as we started looking at this question of thresholds, like I mentioned before, we were looking in quite a few different orchard sites in primarily the Wenatchee River Valley. And then we started working with um, Hilton down in Medford in order to uh, have a wider variety of what sort of damage we're seeing, what sort of natural enemies populations we might be seeing. So over the years, we had 32 sites um, 86 site years because some orchards came in and out of these programs. And again, some of these sites were conventional, some were IPM, which in that case was a, the toolbox approach, but using primarily selective materials, and some were organic. And we did do both beet tray sampling as well as leaf samples and um, sticky traps that had some volatile lures in order to get some of the natural enemies in these sites. And we also graded fruit in these sites, primarily at the end of the season, but also um, at some intermediate points during the season in the later years of the project. Um, we did also look at fruit uh, packouts from the packing house, but we found that this in-orchard grading was quite useful because then we were looking specifically at the psyllid damage um, and not perhaps getting um, other things like stem punctures and so forth, um, conflicting that data in the packing house. So as I've worked on this over the years, we've really evolved the way we looked at this. At first, we were trying to get that scorecard, the ratio of the good guys to the bad guys. And that ratio approach didn't really seem to work. So what we're working with right now is starting out with an economic injury level approach for the Scylla. And when we talk about a, an, an economic injury level or, or in an economic threshold, the first, what we're really trying to do is think about where the cost is going to equal the benefit. So the idea oftentimes is when they're looking at one specific pest and one specific um, spray to see if I if I add this extra spray, is it going to 
reduce the damage enough that it's more than the cost of that spray. Well, we have a little bit more complicated system here because we're, our, our programs fit together, but also because we're not dealing with yield, we're dealing with fruit quality. Um, but basically what we're talking about here is whether your coals per acre um, per silla nymph um, per leaf is gonna be, that damage is gonna be more than the cost of the control. So the first step to that is just like what Westergaard and Burtz were doing years ago, we need to know at what point are we starting to see damage. So this is from the multiple years of the study from 2018 to 2021. The 2017 um, data is not included in all of these data sets because the IPM program was a little bit different in that year. And you can see that this data is not super perfect. We've got quite a bit of a spread. But when we do the regressions on these data, we're planning about 50% of the variation, which for this sort of field data is not horrible. Um, and what useful to look at is, is oftentimes if we think about what percent coals we're getting and folks told me, well, around 5% coals is, you know, is a number that we're used to thinking about. And that tended to be um, for the second generation, um, 0.9 nymphs per leaf for the, the nymphs and for the adults, 2.7 adults in the second generation. Similarly, in the third generation, it was one nymph per leaf or um, three adults per beet tray. And keep in mind that obviously we're not just doing one beet tray out there, right? We're doing 30 beet trays and this is our average number. So this is just giving us some idea, okay, these are levels where we might be getting damage that seems important. We probably don't wanna be getting more than 5% coals out in an orchard. Um, so, you know, this gives us some, some numbers to think about and, and notice that these are a bit higher than what Burtz and Westergaard were seeing, um, primarily in part because we're talking about slightly different things. So Burtz was talking about 0.3 nymphs per leaf to get any damage um, versus here we're talking about 5% coals, not even including the, the fancy in this case. But what's really one of the many things that's tricky with these thresholds is if we want to really get at an economic injury threshold or an economic injury level, we got to include the economics. So the cost of these sprays and the cost of the damage. Um, so the way I ended up doing this, or we ended up doing this, was assuming that the, the sprays at the beginning of the season we're going to be doing no matter what. Because remember, Louie and Robert were talking about how important those early season sprays are. Getting at least two surrounds on, having our insect growth regulators early in the season. And we're as we're primarily thinking about this being um, in injury levels and thresholds for the IPM program to start out with. So we're assuming that the initial part of the season is gonna cost about $800 um, per acre from the example that we used that was a sort of a, a, a normal um, recommended example. So from there, we're, we, we have a bunch of assumptions about what our costs were um, in dollars per box. Um, and one of the things that we felt was important is to look at different bins per acre, right? Because depending on what prices you're getting and what your yields are, what levels are gonna be economic to you might vary. And so these are just examples, but the point is that your economic injury level is going to vary depending on what your costs are and what the potential losses are in your block. So if we look, if, if we calculate based on that regression, the injury levels that you would be potentially getting from um, the, the um, number of scylla that you have in that system, then we can get what would be your economic injury levels um, here. And you can see that we have a much bigger range than that just three scylla per beet tray from 0.3 uh, all the way up to two and a half. 
And then for the psilonyms from 0.3 up to 0.9. So remember, even in that regression, there was a range. And now we've got a bigger range depending on your economics. But we can kind of think about, okay, well, now we've got a range. And if, it's, if I'm getting a higher yield and a higher price, I'm going to have a little bit more latitude for how high I can let my scylla get. Um, that's going to be that same sort of calculation we can do with the third generation um, as well. So there's an, another step to this to make it even more complicated. Don't worry, I'm going to bring it back to something we can use that's not just a bunch of charts. Um, so if we know at what point we might have a, a damaging um, scylla level, we probably want to spray we, before we get to that damaging point, right? Um, and we are oftentimes getting a recommendation, hopefully a week or so ahead of time. It takes a little bit of time to get your product, get everything organized, get it out there. And so we want to know ahead of time what population I want to spray at. So to get at that, we need to know what our general population growth is. And so we're really lucky that we have the new phenology model with Vince Jones, which is based on that base 41 up to 84. So we kind of have an idea of when your um, cumulative relative abundance of each stage might be, but that's actually not a population growth model because it's looking at the cumulative amount of a different growth stage. So what we did with our data was model the populations of, of Scylla and the models that we're getting, um, this is an example for the, the young NIMS in the third generation. And one thing that's kind of interesting about these population curves is that they're different for the conventional, the organic, and the IPM, which makes sense with all that data we've been looking at over the course of the season. But the reason we want to have this is so that we can make um, some decisions at a time point earlier in that generation, so 2,600 degree days or so, in order to know what's the maximum I might be reaching? Cause I don't want to get too high um, at, when I'm going to have the potential to have the most damage. However, I do want to give you a warning that there is a lot of variation in these models. And so just, you know, these are going to hopefully help us get closer, but they're um, going to be exactly precise. Um, one thing because of that variation is that we found you really can only predict out about a week, maybe two weeks. If you try and go to the end of the season, it, the, the models are just not reliable enough. Okay. Oh, and it moved off my slide. Darn it. I thought I checked this. Um, okay. So what this allows us to do is say, okay, if I know that I don't want to get to this um, number of scylla because I, between 0.3 and two and a half scylla adults per beat tray, I tend to get damaged then depending on what sort of system I have, um, I might be able to be pretty close to that number at the decision that I'm gonna, oh, sorry. Um, so for psilonyms per leaf 0.3 to 0.1 in the IPM program, I might be able to be um, pretty close to that or I might need to be a bit lower where I need to make that decision to say, okay, if I'm below this number, I'm likely to not get damage. So let's look at what we might, how we might actually use this information. So if this is actual beat tray data, or excuse me, actual data from the block, nymphs per leaf that were measured, the solid line, um, and these are the economic injury level. That's the level where we said, okay, that's where we start, where we tend to see damage um, from the scylla. The, dotted line would be that prediction of what the model is saying, okay, we, we're probably going to have my population growth look like this. So in this case, they're already up in the, the potential injury level. And so they're probably not low enough to hold off the gas. So they probably want to keep on um, doing their, their strategy and timings, um, like Louie was showing those optimum timings. In this situation, however, if, if we're tracking that psilonyms per leaf and it's staying nice and low and the predicted population, the dotted line 
is also staying relatively low, below, pretty well below that area where we think we might have injury, that's where you might say, okay, maybe I don't need to do those um, later season sprays. So remember with that phenology model, they've got the early season timings that are solid lines. They're suggesting that we really need to do those. So we might be able to use these thresholds, however, for some of these lines or some of these sprays that they have as the dotted lines as sort of optional, right? So when you may or may not need to um, continue spraying in those blocks. And so the way I'm suggesting we start to think about this is if, that you're, if your psyllo levels are below the threshold and your natural enemies are above the natural enemy threshold, we'll talk about in a second, you, that those sprays, those later sprays might not be economic. You might want to wait until the next week when you might see, see how things are going. So I mentioned, what about the natural enemies? This was the piece you guys really wanted to um, see. So we did a bunch of um, linear regressions using a poison model that I don't want to show you all that statistics here. But what we found for a few of the natural enemies is when you were above these levels, the population growth curve tended to level out. You weren't seeing continued increase of the paracilla. So above 0.2 Dariochorus immaturus per vitre or 0.1 um, Campyloma, which would be easier to think about, six per 30 trays or three per 30 trays of the Campyloma. And then earwigs of one, um, or excuse me, two per trap. So there's a lot of other natural enemies we still haven't quite gotten this for. Um, and those population models that I was showing you actually have all the natural enemies built in it as a combination, um, like Robert was saying earlier, where it's the, all of the natural enemies working together, not just a single ones. But this, uh, if we're talking about the thresholds, basically you're able to use your much higher number when your natural enemies are above that threshold, because you're not, because you're assuming that the population is actually not going to continue to increase. So again, how can we actually use this instead of a bunch of tables? If if we're watching our scouting information, um, if your population, even if it's up in um, above the threshold earlier on, but at that point in time you've got a predicted population that's looking like it's gonna stay below that economic injury level and your natural enemies are above those thresholds, um, that might be some timing where you could wait and watch and see um, rather than keeping to add on those additional sprays. So this is something now that we have some numbers that we're pretty confident with, we're gonna to need to continue to test. Um, but, and again, I'm not suggesting that we would use these early in the season. Um, these are only for sort of those optional spray timings where you, you've got your, your major sprays keeping things where they need to be, but you're trying to decide um, if, if you need to do extra or not. So in order to do this, though, we're going to need to continue to have scouting information, both about the pests and the natural enemies. So we are starting a, a scouting network, which would a two year pilot that would allow folks to um, have folks or have folks coming into their blocks, scouting for them, providing information, working with their field staff and the growers um, and doing both natural enemy sampling as well as psilla sampling. Um, and this is not a research project, it's just an outreach project. And so we would not be telling you what to do, but just providing folks with information. Um, so it'd be weekly scouting information, uh, adults, still adults, still nymphs, um, natural enemies, and then showing you that information in a really simple format. We've got a new postdoc coming on um, that has some experience developing applications and so forth. And so what folks have told us before, and we want to have continued discussion is what exactly this would look like, but would be um, your, your scylla and natural enemy numbers, um, as well as some simple figures and 
um, probably getting that to you via text as well as email, depending on who wanted it, um, what way, as well as an app if that was what folks wanted. So overall, um, there we do have some injury levels that we can start working with. Um, it, I find it a little easier to think about those 5% call numbers of one nymph per leaf and three adults per tray. But really that economic range is gonna be between 0.3 to two and a half adults per tray um, for the second generation and 0.8 to three adults per tray in the third generation. Um, and then these natural enemy thresholds, where if we're above those thresholds, hopefully that is keeping our um, scylla in check. So I haven't really figured out the greatest way to explain this stuff to you all. So I, this was my first attempt and I appreciate your patience, um, but I'm happy to take any questions and um, hopefully we can have some discussion about this potential for using thresholds and, and scouting as we go forward. Okay.